Opening slide graphic text title, At Home with Jacob, with Jacob Hughes. Image of Jacob Hughes with three friends. Text, Purpose Matters Conference, Logos, Belonging Matters and Talks That Matter dot net. I would like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land myself and my fellow speakers are on today. I am currently on Oedeko land, and I pay respect to the elders, past and present. Hi, I'm Jacob, and this is my dog Angie. I'd like to talk to you all, about how I live in my home my own way. This is my house, I grew up here. When it was time for me to leave home, my mum left home instead, so I could have a wheelchair accessible house. I have been living by myself, and sometimes with housemates, for the past four years. My mum lives close by, and we see each other most days. When she stays too long I tell mum to go home. My house is great, but that is not what makes it a home. It's also everything else that comes alongside it, all of which add up to me being able to live in my own place, my way. In my home, I decide who comes through the door and what I do with my time. I love having people visit, hosting outdoor movie nights, listening to music and watching sport. I also like time by myself, sleeping in, privacy and freedom. Cover 19 is annoying. I've had to change the way I do many things, and the places I go to be covered safe. I have a trusty team of support workers, family and friends who give me a hand. There are a lot of things to think about, sometimes it is hard for me to say exactly what I want, so it is really good to have people around me who know me well enough to support me in thinking about how I live my life, and how to keep me well. I'm being supported by some of the people in my life to find a new housemate who would be a great match for me. Overall, my home is my place. I am in the driver's seat. I am living my life in my own home, my way. Hi, I'm Lucy. I've known Jake for about six years. Uh, we originally met when I was working for him as a support worker and we became really good mates. Uh, I moved to Brisbane in 2020 and I actually moved back to Newcastle in 2021. And I was really lucky um, to get to live with Jacob for a little while. So I've got to see the process of Jake living in his own home, in his own way from a couple of different perspectives uh, as a support worker, um, as a roommate, and as a member of his circle of support now. In this video, I'm going to talk with Jackie, and Jackie was Jacob's first roommate. So we're going to talk a little bit about how they met each other, what the process was like of deciding if it was the right fit for everyone involved, um, what was important for Jackie and Jacob to kind of have space to get to know each other and build a relationship while they were living together, and some of the challenges and some of the things that were really awesome about living together. After that, Hugh is going to talk as part of Jacob's circle of support about what the circle does um, and what the role of the circle of support is in terms of supporting Jake's vision to live in his own home the way that he chooses. I hope that you enjoy. I'm Jackie. I know Jake through Lucy. So I grew up with Lucy and um, while I was living in Newcastle, was hanging out with Lucy and met Jake through through Lucy and then became housemates a bit later on. Yeah, cool. Um, so do you want to go a little bit more into how you and Jake um, got to get in contact with each other? 
Yeah, absolutely. So, um, well, we were actually introduced by Lucy um, as Lucy had just been doing support work with Jake and I was coming up to the end of my my rental lease and Luce um, just, you know, made a passing comment about how they were looking for a housemate for Jake and we just got talking about it and it kind of felt like maybe it would be a good fit. Um, yeah. And then, yeah, I think from there, I Luce got me in contact with Linda, Jake's mum, and we kind of met up for, for a drink and to just suss the vibe, I suppose. And then from that, I um, started to meet Jake. I came over to the house and hung out. I met Angie, <laughs> little puppy. Um, had to make sure I passed the vibe check for Angie mm-hmm. and um, started coming to a few more events that Jake had going on and yeah, just seeing if, if it would work, if we'd work as housemates. Mm-hmm. so like in the beginning it was a lot of kind of getting a sense of each other and how you might be able to fit together yeah for sure for sure it wasn't a um wasn't like a meet and move in the next day kind of situation it was a uh, probably at least over a couple of months I think of um of yeah seeing if it would work and not jumping in just to make sure we were both on board with it yeah cool and how did you find that kind of that process because I guess it's a little bit maybe longer than some other like situations that you might find yourself in but it was good for me because I still had a couple of months um up my sleeve with my current one that I was in so it gave me time to really I guess know if it was if moving in with Jake was what is something I'd want to do um and it was cool. Like I got to come to lots of different social things and meet a lot, a lot of different people that I otherwise wouldn't have. So it was a good experience all in all. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> and um, through that kind of like the start of the process, um, did you get a sense about how um, – the like living arrangement kind of related to Jake's like vision for his life um as just like a dude living at home (laughs) yeah yeah absolutely um it was just like a big emphasis on us just being housemates um which was really cool like we'd I was really looking for um a housemate that would or an environment that would um be like social and we'd you know go and do things and that was what Jake is all about so it was, yeah, really nice to to see that and to be able to, like, do it and like, move in and just walk up the street to Beaumont Street and have coffees. Like, that's, yeah, what I was really after. Yeah, cool. Cool. And what other kind of things were, like, important when you were living with Jake for you to kind of, like, build a relationship um, with him? <laughs> I feel like we bonded a lot over whatever was going on at 7.30 on the TV. I think <laughs> a lot of the times it was Bachelor. That was a biggie um probably maths as well (laughs) yeah we bonded a lot over our reality tv and then um, I lived there over the summer and we're both big cricket fans so we spent a lot of time just sitting in front of the tv in the aircon watching the cricket (laughs) (laughs) and then when that was over we'd probably go down the pub or something (laughs) (laughs) yeah cool um and like before you moved in um, did you have any reservations? Were there any big things um, at the front of your mind that were like a little bit um, like you're unsure about? Um, I think I was really lucky because I had you as, um, I guess, kind of like the middleman between being Jake's support worker and Jake's friend and being my friend. So I feel like you um, you would have curbed my, if I did have any anxieties, but I can't actually remember. Were there things that um were a little bit tricky for you when you were living with Jake and were there some ways that made it like a that were there some ways that you had of like addressing those kind of things um I wouldn't call it tricky but one of like the, the different things was um especially the first couple of weeks so I lived there kind of waking up and there'd be a different support work which I may not have met in the house and just you know coming out first thing in the morning and you got to you make some small talk with someone you don't really know. That was different, but once once I got to know everyone, everyone was super cool and chill. Um, and I guess the other part of that as well is that Jake had like a very regular team of support, um, like while you were living there. So mm-hmm. it gives you that opportunity to like get to know people um, yep. a bit better, as opposed to 
if Jake didn't have like a core team, just like a yeah. random essentially coming through the doors. Yeah, I think that was um, that was like a big part of like a good thing as from my end, um, you know, being a young female that I know the people who are going to be in the house and I know that the team has like vetted them and that they're all good and reliable and whoever is going to be out there in the morning is going to be good value. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really cool. Awesome. Well, thank you, um, Jackie, for okay. having with me. <laughs> <laughs> it's an honour. <laughs> no, it actually is though. <laughs> Hi, my name's Hugh, and I've had an evolving relationship with Jacob Hughes for the better part of 10 years. Originally, I'd met Jacob Hughes as his support worker, and while I was working as his support worker, I found that Jacob really gelled with my circle of friends, and as my career went in a different direction, uh, I found Jacob and I just remained really great friends. And recently, Jacob has asked me to take on another role in his friendship, and that's as part of his circle of support. And um, so what is a circle of support? One way to look at it might be, say, if you've got a friend that starts dating someone, your friend group may get together and offer advice to the friend about the new relationship. Man, you don't want to date this person. They make a terrible lasagna. It's not going to work out. (laughs) Or another way to look at it is uh, the circle of support is a group of people that listen to Jacob's ambitions and his dreams, and then we move and take action to actualize that. So I'd like to show you this diagram here, and this is the hierarchy of an organized crime organization, (laughs) But, but I think the model fits really well. So up the top, we've got the boss, and that's Jacob. Then below Jacob is the underboss, and they are people like Jacob's family, um, who no one will look after Jacob better. Um, They've really got his best interests at heart. Then below Jacob's um, family, the underbosses, you've got people who are organizing for Jacob and um, getting stuff done. So people who are making sure that his um, support rosters are up to date and uh, making sure that the resources in his house are up to date and then you've got the foot soldiers down the bottom who are really getting it done for Jacob. But over here on the side is the consigliare and this is Jacob's trusted group of people who listen to his dreams and listen to his ambitions and then we make sure that um, Jacob is moving towards achieving his ambitions and dreams. In a um, social and safe, uh, protected way, um, but in a progressive way as well, uh, as anyone would like to progress through their career or um, their social relationships, whatever they're moving through in life. One focus that we have at the moment as Jacob's circle of support is to look for a new housemate for Jacob. Jacob's a 30-year-old man. He's finally managed to give his mum the boot and he's looking for someone to share his space with. I mean, we're all looking for the ideal housemate, uh, someone that will do their own dishes, lock the door when they go out and, you know, maybe have a beer by the pool from time to time and, and a catch up. It's nice to share a space with people and, um, and to live with other people. So we're doing this in, an, in a natural way. We're drawing on our social networks and people we know and trust. And we're thinking who might be a great living companion for Jacob. And you want your friends to live with good people because when you go to visit, you go and you meet the people and it becomes part of your extended social network. And we're just trying to build this strong, help Jacob build this strong environment and um, and grow that social network for him. We're doing this um, through Jacob and and helping and also a little bit extra, you know, drawing on our own social networks as well. But we're not necessarily doing this through Jacob's uh, mum, who's been pro- the predominant driver of, of Jacob's um, progression in a lot of his life's activities. So like anyone, when you're um, breaking the ties with your parents, um, there's a, there could be a little bit of fear there. And as Jacob's circle of support, we're also there to... Um, work through that fear in, you know, a logical and um, a safe and a methodical way and to ensure that Jacob um, 
is going to get the best out of this, is going to have a fun time and is safe, and also that his um, close network, that his underbosses are also feeling comfortable with the way that the head of the organisation is living and, and he's going as well. So uh, there's a little bit of balancing, but it's pretty like decent, really, you know, it's about decency. Jacob is a really reasonable person and you just want reasonable people to be with reasonable people. So we've just um, got to find that match up and, um, and someone that will, yeah, hopefully make a decent lasagna. Closing slide graphic text with thanks to Jacob Hughes, Lucy Biddle, Hugh Jones, Crowdcoms, Purpose Matters Conference 2022. This video was made possible with the support of an information and capacity building grant through the Department of Social Services, produced by Belonging Matters. Belonging Matters makes every effort to provide accurate and up-to-date material. However, information is subject to change, and our materials for reference only. This video was filmed on the land of the Rwandari Warwarwang peoples of the Eastern Kulin Nation. Logos Belonging Matters Talks That Matter .net. Graphic text. More Purpose Matters conference videos. To watch more videos from the Purpose Matters conference, please head to free videos on the Talks That Matter website, talksthatmatter.net. Logos belonging matters, talks that matter.